Now, a lot of this we did, so it'll be very simple. Not too bad at all. If you go to your list of crazy cardiac stuff, uh, you should have something that says T, T, E, T, E, E, blah, 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 blah. It's somewhere in the pink stuff. Two pages prior to where you were, yep. Now, I did this on purpose. The first one, non-invasive. Transthoracic echo. The two that are invasive, I put them together. And you're not going to forget that I put an oscopy in there and you already knew that oscopies were invasive. So the first one is TTE or transthoracic echo. It's non-invasive. We do this for cardiac tamponade and pericarditis. We don't have to go inside of you for that. So cardiac tamponade, pericarditis, those would be examples where, you know, we're doing a TTE. The TEE and bronchoscopy, which you do have a handout for in the same packet I think we've been in, and it probably says cardioversion or some shit. Maybe not. Is there a cardioversion one in here? Maybe it's in the other one. Oh, okay, so your CPR, I forgot about that. Now, your CPR handout is nice. Everybody in here knows CPR, so that's not going to be hard for you. But what is maybe a little bit more challenging for you as we close up shop is this issue of cardioversion and defibrillator. If you look on the handout in this CPR packet, you have the same thing you have in your MI packet. You're not going to go crazy with this little page because we do it over and over again anyway. It's that important. But what I want you to write across the top, well, more so down here, your first nursing action is to check responsiveness, bend the pulse, right? You guys know that. Check responsiveness, and then start pounding on the chest. Do we do CPR anymore, or do we do CAB? CAB. Chest compressions first. CAB. Chest compressions first. Then airway, then breathing. Okay, we don't do ABCs no more. Remember airway, breathing, and circulation? We switch the game up. We do circulation first, which is your chest compressions. And then worry about airway after that. Now, so you call the code, right? Y'all all right with that? You know how to do that. If you're in the community, things are going to be totally different. Check your CPR front page. Your CPR front page. Of course, everything you ever needed is going to be in here, but do me a favor. Let's make a chain game going across the top. So, here we go. This is your order. Check, call, care. C-A-B. Okay? You checked the patient and you checked the area. This is in the community because trust and believe we have had more people die that pulled over on the freeway to help somebody because they pulled over in an area where ice was and they was getting hit as they getting out the car to help somebody. So we've had people do that. You not finna help nobody. You not finna do that if the area is not safe. I'm sorry, I love everybody, but if I'm on 30th and Cedar and I hear gunfire, it's just going to be some dead folk because I'm going home. I'm not going to get my, out my car on 30th and Cedar. That's insanity. Okay, so these are things you don't want to do. Okay, 
Now, so you check the patient, you check the area. When it comes to the patient, you have to shake and shout. Remember that. Shake and shout. Some people say tap, I say shake, because they might be drunk. Just keeping it real. <laughs> shake and shout, baby. Okay. Now, once you can't get them to respond, you call 911. Remember your CPR? I wrote little cheat sheet notes for you right on the sheet already. You ain't got to write it. I already hooked you up. If one rescue person is a healthcare professional and there are two of you, 15 to 2 is absolutely fine. Otherwise, 30 to 2 is the rule. 30 compressions for every two breaths. You're done, baby. You did good. Okay, 30 to 2 for your little compressions to airway. Something else you want to remember. Write it on here. It's in the packet. But write child is one hand. Chest compressions are done with one hand. Baby, chest compressions are done with two fingers. Again, child, chest compressions are done with one hand. Babies, chest compressions done with two fingers. I've had to do that. Okay. Okay. Um, the last couple of things, thank God, that I want to tell you to do your highlighting with and you're done. Start at the very beginning of the packet. We're going page by page in the pink packet. Remember I said miscellaneous? Miscellaneous means if you read it once, you're done. Okay, so we're going to turn the page. Turn the page again. Turn the page again. You should be on O2 therapy. You're going to see uh, pulse ox on the next page. Does everybody see pulse ox on the next page? After O2 therapy, I'm in the pink. What are you doing? Come on, chop, chop. Okay, do you guys see it? Oh, y'all done lost half of you. Trust me, put a highlight there and put study once because it is on there. It's a select all. Pulse ox is a select all. It's nothing major. You just read it once, you're fine. What are you doing? Pulse ox. It's right on the next page. Y'all better help each other. I ain't trying to be here till 10 o'clock at night because y'all drunk. Pulse socks. Okay, now you're going to put stars now because everything going to look alike when you get to studying. So just put a star and then you're going to have a key. That color star that you make should be the same color star through the whole pack. And that star means read once. Okay. All right. Keep going. Turn. Oh, dialysis. Read once. We're going to do it next week anyway. But you're going to get to a point where you see dialysis. Just put read once. Put a little star. Put your blue star. Because some of these just aren't as important as others. Next to your cardiac procedures that we just finished, you are only going to put a star near MUGA scan and VQ scan if you are high level test taker and you still go put read once and I'll tell you those in a minute LVAD, RVAD, LVAD this is almost a whole lecture this is a big deal that's not something I can do you know so I'm going to do some stuff with you and well you probably had it in cardiac yes who has cardiac already yeah, remember it's the um, artificial pump outside the body for CHF. 
Oh, good, because it takes time. Yeah, okay, so you remember that? Okay, listen to me. Put this down, because if you didn't have it, it's not going to be that bad. But you have to remember, it is an artificial left or right ventricle outside the body. It is for CHF. And if you came to any of the final exam tutorings, I covered it there too. So it's one of those pumps for the end stage CHF, two reasons. Either to get them to stay alive long enough to get a heart transplant, that's called bridge therapy. Or to just give them a better quality of life with CHF, and that's called destination therapy. Okay. Yeah, if they need a um, heart transplant. These are my favorite pages in the um, packet, these next two pages, because they're so easy. All of these, swear, I don't tell you any more that's already on there. Read once. I don't do a lecture on it. I read to you. You can read on your own. Read these once. But just two pages. Eardrops, eye drops, restraints, stool for guayac, staple remover, cold packs. I mean, how difficult can a cold pack lecture be? Come on now. Ted hose. <laughs> Glucose, okay? Machine alarms. Okay, and the last one is neuro, we did that, and the one after that says blood, urine, and wound cultures, you have a handout for it, it's easy. Bioterrorism, that we do in neuro and toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and you can trust and believe that this Saturday we'll be doing it. So whatever I didn't cover in bioterrorism, all bioterrorism will be on this Saturday's toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, next Saturday. Uh, huh? That's a hint. It sure is. Uh, race and pass are handouts. Read it once. Don't study no shit like that. If you read that once in your whole life, you'd get it right. All your shocks I did already when in class. Not that long ago, actually. And then the next page, you know these. They're in your medication packets. And the nutrition is in your Oh My God's. So you already have it twice. Now let's talk positions and you're done. Trust me when I tell you, you got to know every picture in this packet. They're the exact same pictures that you have on your exam. Do not underestimate this section right here. In fact, take your highlighter and highlight body mechanics because nurses don't even pay attention to that section. And you get about a question or two from this section right here. Body mechanics, uh, Alicia. You ain't where I'm at. If you ain't where I'm at, it's a problem. I don't want to hear that shit. Okay. Then look what I wrote at the bottom of the um, page before that. You must read body mechanics. The page before that, I, read, I wrote that. Must be important. I don't know. Okay, I love the back sheet, and the one I want you to circle is knee chest. I want you to literally circle that whole position. It's called knee chest, and this is the proper positioning for a prolapse cord. Because you're going to get the head off of the baby's cord this way. Knee chest. That dorsal recumbent, circle it and put Foley catheter insertion. Sims up at the top right hand corner. 
add the words left lateral and put colonoscopy and enema. These are actual pictures. Lithotomy. You can put pap test, suppositories, D and C, which is your dilation and curatage. D and C, dilation and curatage. If you flip the page backwards, they give you a really, really nice explanation for each thing. For instance, if you look at the knee chest, go all the way over, look what it says. Umbilical cord, prolapse cord. It even tells you that. Okay? So, this knee chest, it even says it way over on the side. It says prolapse cord. Highlight those words because they're very common right here. Prolapse cord. Alrighty. If you look at dorsal recumbent, you go all the way over, it tells you what it's for, Foley catheter. So, I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that. You see it? Everybody see it? Okay. Foley catheter way over on the side. Yeah, man. It's cool. Okay, babies. Now, it's up to you, but I can do VQ scan, which is a little complex, and MUGA scan. It takes maybe 15 more minutes. It's up to you. I don't really care. Okay, let's roll. Number one, a MUGA scan is a nuclear test. That's on your cardiac list, MUGA. It's a nuclear test. It is done when we are evaluating a patient with CHF, we are going to look at ejection fraction, and it is done at rest, as well as, for some people, at exercise. So it may be done with the treadmill as well. As with any nuclear test, no smoking, no caffeine. So it doesn't matter what kind of nuclear test, no smoking, no caffeine, nobody pregnant, right? No smoking, no caffeine, nobody pregnant, all nuclear tests. This ejection fraction, when you hit the button that says eject for a DVD, a CD, a cassette, back in the day, a track, what happened? Something came out. Would you agree? Ejection means the blood pumped out of the ventricle. If the patient has CHF, the MUGA scan will show an ejection fraction of less than 50. And as you may recall, the BNP, which is a blood test, huh? Yay, greater than 50. So you guys remember some cardiac. <laughs> oh, good. Good, good, good. So that's that. Okay. Uh, the other one was what? What was it? Oh, VQ scan. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Now, VQ scan I covered in respiratory, but let's do a quickie on that too. It's a two-part test, so two-part scan. One is going to be a radioactive, and what is it? Nuclear, right? Radioactive gas. The other is a radioactive dye. Nuclear. The V and the Q. The V is ventilation. Obviously, that's the gas. The radioactive dye is the Q, but somebody didn't know the alphabet, and that stands for perfusion. Don't ask. So some of your colleagues will say, she needs a ventilation perfusion scan. So 
same thing, VQ scan, ventilation perfusion scan. Only a few doctors know how to do it. So it's not as popular as it used to be. And then not a lot of them learning it, okay? The Cleveland Clinic probably does it, and the UH and Metro. Okay, now, when I'm looking at this type of scan, the VQ scan, I have two different people that I would use it with. If I thought my patient had a pulmonary embolism, this would be indicated. Or if I thought my patient had ARDS, it would be indicated. Either one. Now let me show you what happens. Again, you will have to pay attention to this. You will not have to write because you can't do both and learn. This is how this goes. The nurse has put the IV in. The dye goes in, radioactive dye. The dye goes in through the vein. This is why it becomes imperative that you know the direction of flow in the blood in the heart. What is going to happen with the dye? It's going to go through the superior vena cava, the right atria, the try it before you buy it valve, the right ventricle. If there is a pulmonary embolism, there will be a clot in my pulmonary artery. Don't we agree? So the dye will get there and can't go no further because the clot's blocking passage of the dye. That's called a mismatch on the perfusion because you can't get any more dye through the heart. It's a mismatch on the perfusion. Okay, let's switch it up. Instead, we don't know which one it is. We're just going to say we don't know. We think it's ours, but it could be a PE because the patient's short of breath anyway. We're both. So we're going to do the same damn thing. If it's ours, the dye is going to go all the way through and you're going to see it go. There's no blockage, correct? But the gas that you had that patient inhale. If you remember your ARDS, ARDS is atelectasis or collapse of the alveoli. When you inhale the gas, that gas can't get in the alveoli if they're collapsed. So you're going to see no dye in the smallest sacs of the lungs. There's no dye. There's there's no gas, no radioactive colored gas. That's a mismatch on ventilation. ARDS is a mismatch on ventilation. Pulmonary embolism is a mismatch on perfusion. I don't give a shit which mismatch you deal with on this test because they don't say nothing but mismatch. It's going to say mismatch. Your patient gets oxygen first with both. First Nursing action with a mismatch of any kind is O2. Bye, Felicia. Y'all done now, shit. Get y'all again.